everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We're going back to the 80s. Super fun. And we are talking about the rom-coms of the 80s, romantic comedies. And we've already done a classics rom-com episode. And we did a 60s and 70s rom-com episode ranking last fall. So we'll put a link down to both of those in the description. And it'll be real fun. And here we're talking about the 80s. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner. Cherry's here. Hi. And uh, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. You ready? I'm to talk ready to 80s? talk. To it. Yep. <laughs> yes. I love this era. Yes. Of the movies. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I, and there's just too many good ones to choose from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, really, that's why I mean, we the other decades we kind of combined into others. Right. Uh, this one it was like we had to have a whole episode because there were so right. many. The, and yeah. It, the rom coms were in their heyday. Yes. Yeah. Eighties and nineties. Yeah. Yeah. Some really good writing. And there's ones that we've had a lot of debate, you and I, uh, yes. back and forth. Does it count? Is it a rom com? And, uh, and so some people might have others that we kind of took off the list, kind of like what we did with the apartment mm-hmm. and the classics list. We decided it's not a rom com. Uh, but it, for example, we, d- we decided that Dirty Dancing didn't count. Right. Because it's a drama. It's not a, it's totally. not a comedy. You can't put baby in a corner. That yeah. is a drama. Yeah, baby in a corner. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, yes. Let's dive in. Let's do it. Well, what do you have at number 12? My number 12 is Overboard uh, with yeah. Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell. Listen, I know this movie's <laughs> premise is not great because... Goldie Hawn is a a very rich person. She's super entitled. She's mean. She's on this beautiful yacht with her husband, who's played by um, Edward uh, Herman, Herman, and her mother is uh, Catherine uh, Helmer. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes. But so uh, Kurt Russell comes on. He's a carpenter. He builds her a closet. And uh, she's like, this isn't cedar wood or whatever. And she refuses to pay him. And he's like, I can't believe these rich snobs. And uh, lo and behold, one night she hurts, drops her ring and, you know, her husband's doing some fancy work, you know, <laughs> controlling that uh, that boat. And she flips over and he's, Kurt Russell's watching TV and there she pops up, irate, yelling. She's got amnesia. Nobody knows. So his bright ideas for revenge is to say that she's his wife. He saw a tattoo of her um, on her uh it's just like right above her rear end, you know, a tattoo. When she was, she's uh-huh. wearing a bathing suit. She bent over. He noticed the tattoo. And that's how they, he's got no papers, no nothing. But the hospital is so sick of her. They're like, oh, she got a tattoo. Take her. Take her off our hands. And, uh, and you know, there's a lot of cameos from people. Uh, oh, I think who finds her is, um, uh, is it uh, Edward? Um, Edward uh, James, uh God, what's his name? Also, I think he plays the Portuguese fisherman who finds her. It's really funny. Mm-hmm. But um, so basically, this is a mad. Uh, he's gaslighting her. The whole movie's where he's gaslighting her. He's got rotten kids. You know, he's a widower. He's got rotten kids. She's. He basically makes her a housekeeper. He's got his best friend to Photoshop her head on wedding photos. <laughs> when she starts asking for proof that they're married, because she's going, "How do I know you're my husband? What proof do we have?" So essentially, she learns how to cook and clean, but she whips those boys into shape. She helps Kurt Russell with his finances and, and you know, his dream for a mini golf. And he's like, hey, this ain't bad. But he's essentially holding her hostage this whole entire time. But they do end up falling in love. And of course, uh, her husband, her rich husband, like, he's like, my wife is missing. Let's party. <laughs> this continues the party avoiding his mother-in-law's calls you know eventually he has to go get his wife and and she remembers and it's a a whole thing and they are reunited in the end because she's the rich one and she dumps her husband for kurt russell and those bratty kids are like we're rich now anyway it's (laughs) it's not the greatest because i just love it because goldie hahn and kurt russell have such great chemistry they're so much fun together you yeah. can tell they love each other. Like it's clearly like you can tell they're a real life couple. It's right there, mm-hmm. and it's so eighties that we even as a child when I watched this we would buy the fact that this man kidnaps this woman, 
and gaslights her to thinking his wife so he could so she could cook and clean for him as his revenge for her not paying him to build that closet. And it's mm -hmm. it definitely yeah, would not fly I have, today. I have overboard on my list. Yeah, I I think today. because it leans into the comedy. It oh, knows it's, it's absurd. So silly. It's totally it, it's totally absurd. Yeah, they, that it's kind of silly to me to be offended by it because <laughs> it's not like it's not taking itself I, seriously. It's not trying no, to be a message movie or anything I, like that. I never knew people felt that way until a couple recently. I guess everybody's reevaluating everything. Well, when and the remake like, came out, I think that that you know people were like, I didn't even know there was a remake. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> it's it's they they gender swap it, which I guess supposedly is oh. supposed to make it better. But mm -hmm. uh, Eugenio Derbez is one of my favorite current actors, and he and Anna Faris. Oh yeah. And, there, so that you do have two funny. extremely charming uh, actors uh, in it. So I think it works better than it should, but it's still kind of like, ooh, this, this, this probably wasn't a great idea. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I did not the know they made a remake. They did. I don't even yeah. think it could work though. It's it's not it's, it's not awful, but it's not great. <laughs> this is just one of those movies that I don't think works any other time and place yeah, than it was now. Exactly, it's bonkers. Yeah, well, but I love it so much. My number 12 is, uh, is look who's talking. Oh, my, my number, number 11. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think this is really funny. Amy oh, Heckerling gosh. knows yeah. how to direct comedies. Totally. She's, and I would say this is sort of underappreciated because I think we have uh, the yeah. terrible sequels, you know, that, that came out, uh, that people didn't like. Um, yeah. and, uh, but this is actually pretty funny and, Kirstie Alley uh, is 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 good in this lead role. You feel sorry for her because she really thinks that she's in love with George Segal, uh, oh. who's married, and of course is going to be with. Uh, and then John Travolta is, has never been more charming than never. In this movie. He's so charming. I think this is one of his like John Travolta is a man who's risen out of the ashes so many times in his career, yeah. <laughs> and this was another another rise out of the ashes for him. Yeah. Um, when this came out, they were like, "Oh, yeah, John Travolta is still around." You know, kind of mm -hmm. like what Pulp Fiction did for him in the nineties. Yeah. Like he's had so many true. resurrections. But yeah, yeah, he is super charming in this movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Well, so that's your eleven. My yeah. eleven is Splash. Sorry, all right, Splash. that didn't make my list. Mm, okay, but it's, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, what do you call that? A uh, honorable mention yeah take on the on the little mermaid kind of story yeah. it's like a super horny movie i don't think we remember <laughs> how like how like attracted they are to each other and how much is like because she's just kind of up for because she's an animal you know like right, she's a mermaid so, she's up yeah, for it <laughs> i mean she got legs she's going for it you know yeah. i don't blame her have you seen uh, this on disney plus yet but i i don't know i i at least i i think i remember it sort of more sweetly than yeah, like, yeah. oh no it is it is a sexy movie <laughs> eugene levy is just so hysterical in this when yeah. he's trying to like she's a mermaid she's a mermaid but i think what's <laughs> even funnier is if you watch this on disney plus uh -huh. um because i thought this i i was interested i was like are they going to edit this you know because yeah. they're it's not it's not raunchy or anything but you know there are some suggestions but when she's coming out of the water, they they CGI more hair to Daryl Hand so oh, to they cover did? her butt. That's yeah. interesting. Because remember, when she comes out of the water, she gets yeah. legs. You do see uh, yeah. there isn't. I'm just gonna say it, there's a butt shot, but uh -huh. so they make her hair longer to cover it, and it just it makes me giggle every That's time I funny. see it. That is yeah. really funny. <laughs> but, uh, Creative, but yeah, I it's guess a, it's a really good romance. It is funny. Tom story. Hanks is at the height of mm -hmm. his when he was doing these comedic like uh, just romances and stuff yeah great. and i actually there, a long time ago there was talk that they were going to do a gender yes, swap of I this and that's with Channing tatum playing the mermaid right i remember that that and could have worked i feel like that's a gender swap that actually could work totally it could be interesting to sort of see this really um uh this this kind of cool yeah. you know mermaid totally. character and um this romance between you know i i think it, it could usually i don't like the gender swapping it's just right for, yeah. it's just for nothing but right. that one i feel like there's some things you could do no, with you gender totally that yeah totally yeah. i think you'd be perfect he's probably too old to do it now yeah probably now but it would have made sense and if you watch mm -hmm. splash watch it for john candy he's hysterical too in it yeah yeah that's true yeah uh so what do you have at 10 i have coming to america 
Yeah, that um, one was an honorable mention. Yeah, so like just because the romance is a little more secondary, but it's I, a little I do, more secondary. But like, but I, it's, it's a good one. It's yeah. a good one, and he's you know Eddie Murphy's a prince, and he you know doesn't want to like be in an arranged marriage, and he comes to America, mm-hmm. and shenanigans happen. You know, he's got to work at the the version of McDonald's. He yeah. falls in love with this woman. He's got to try to woo her, and you know he's um okay. Yeah. So a lot of those movies from the, those comedies from the eighties, I have not been a fan of. Right. Like I didn't like, uh, um, I didn't like Beverly Hills cop and I didn't like, mm-hmm. I didn't like lethal weapon. And I don't know, just a lot, just not for me. Um, but this one actually, this one I actually thought was pretty funny. This is funny too, because he's like, um, it's kind of, I guess it, 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 this means when I was growing up, that that's what they used to call us Portuguese kids. Uh, fresh off the boat so it's met in a derogatory oh, way yeah. but if you take it in as an innocent way he is kind of fresh off the boat because he has no idea in New yeah, York. Like, like fish this out man of water. is rich he's got yeah. like he doesn't need to do any of this now you know the simpletons live mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> um my number 10 is where i have overboard silly mm-hmm. silly movie but very romantic great chemistry uh it's a true romantic comedy it doesn't forget right. that. And uh, it's so, yeah, a lot of fun. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode. And that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. So what do you have at nine? I have Roxanne. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's a good one. With uh, Steve Martin and... Um, yeah, I had that one as an honorable mention. Uh, Daryl Hannah. I'm sorry, Daryl Hannah. I totally blanked on her name. I don't have it written down here. And I was like, <laughs> um, um, um. Yeah. <laughs> like a fool. I'm sorry. Uh, it is. It's a modern day remake of Cyrano. Yes. And Steve Martin does have the nose. It's so funny thing because he's like a fireman. He's beloved and stuff, but he can't. His nose gets in the way. And basically, you know, it's it's very funny. It's Cyrano. But I think Steve Martin and Daryl, it's just so sweet. I, I find it so sweet. And I think Steve Martin is so good in this. And like I give or take Daryl Hannah, uh, but she she is good in this. And I just find this movie very charming. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, my next one is where I have Murphy's Romance. Mm-hmm. And uh, this uh, is very like tropey kind of romance. And uh, and they he's a lot older than her, but uh, they acknowledge that in the script. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, James Garner and Sally Field, I think, have really nice chemistry. And I just thought the script was really well done and funny. And I liked both these characters. I did it for uh for family movie night uh last year uh the, the patrons got to pick and uh our patron becky she picked it i'd never seen it before and uh yeah. i really i really enjoyed it i thought it was yeah a i think this yeah sweet romance yeah it might be a forgotten one too i mm-hmm. think yep yeah yeah um so what do you have at where see where are we Lost we are at eight i believe eight okay over yeah because okay. that was my nine um right. so what do you have at eight i have uh hello again I think this was a completely forgotten one. It's yeah, I haven't Shelley, seen this one. Yeah, this is uh, Shelley Long. It's uh, and um, uh, Gabriel Bryan. Okay, so at the start of the movie, Shelley Long, she's married to Corbin Benson. She's like a, a housewife, and he's like this corporate guy. She is like a bumbling, clumsy fool. She's got like a big heart, but like she falls. It's she falls out of her clothes a lot, which is pretty funny. And Shelley Long is very good at the comedic timing. But her sister is sort of like a um, a very mystical, spiritual woman, kind of like that sort of hippie-ish. 
played by Judith Ivy. She's very good. And when she's over her sister's like mystic shop, she chokes with Chinese food and dies, Rachel. Oh no. <laughs> because she's so klutzy and stuff that of course she would choke on just simple food and die. And so her, like Shelley Long's best friend in that movie is played by Celia, Celia Ward. So a year, so if jumps it jumps back to a year and her sister has found a spell or whatever that could bring Shelley Long back to life. So she goes to the cemetery and she tries it. And when Shelley Long comes back to life and she's like, oh my God, it works. So Shelley Long is like going back to her life, but she finds out that her husband, who's played by Corbin Benson, has now married her best friend, Celia Ward. The only person who's happy to see her alive is like her sister and she has a son, a grown son. And uh, so she's trying to hide out and uh, <laughs> she gets into an accident, goes to the emergency room and the doctor is Gabriel Brine. And she's like, listen, I came back, you know, I was dead and I've come back and my whole world, my, like my life is over. Like there's nothing left of what I knew before. And he's like, excuse me, do you need help? <laughs> and then he's like, no, you really oh. did die. Because he looks at the records and he goes, what's going on? I've got to study you. Why are you back alive? And basically they two sort of fall in love. But she's really got to show her ex-husband. I don't think, well, it's still her husband because she came back to life. So I don't know how it counts. <laughs> she's got to show him. And then Celia Ward, who's like more of one of those. Uh -huh. She's the best friend, but really a friend of me deep down inside. Uh -huh. and, and like when she pops up in their house and he starts screaming, Corbin Benz is so funny. He starts screaming like, oh, my God, I thought you were dead. And Celia Ward does, too. <laughs> and she's like, when did you guys get together? And it's just it's so hysterical because she's walking. Around. She's still a bumbling like she's a sweet woman who's smart, but she's just bumbling. And the way she falls down a railing and loses her skirt and she's nothing mm -hmm. in a slip at an important party. is just it's so funny. It's an underrated comedy. I don't think a lot of people remember it that much. I don't know how well it did when it came out, but yeah, I've never I've seen, seen it. I saw it on TV as a kid and I've loved it ever since. Huh. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Um, my number eight is where I have Bull Durham. I think it is a wonderful movie uh, that Susan Strandon is so yeah. sexy in the movie. She totally is. Yeah, she's great as this groupie of this baseball, minor league baseball team. Kind of, uh, she picks one player to be her player each, mm -hmm. each yeah. year um kevin oh, costner yeah. comes into town he is uh one of those guys that just keeps getting passed along to different minor league teams right. uh, can he make it uh and then there's the he's uh, getting old too he's like almost yeah he's out. getting old and then there's the hot new prospect guy on um, tim robbins uh and uh, all these are people are at the top of their games Totally. It's a very sexy movie. It's a very uh, well-written, uh, well-done movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, this is a movie that I like, but I don't love. But I just remember, I was like, man, Kevin Costner is at the height of just being super good looking. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> you know, both, yeah. you know, him, him and Susan Saran are just so beautiful. You know, yeah. they mesmerize you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. What do you have at seven? So my seven, I... I sort of um, didn't know if this belonged to the rom-com because I sometimes think it's more of a drama, but this movie means a lot to me. It's Mystic Pizza. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it means a lot to me because when we were growing up, there weren't really modern day movies where it was about Portuguese people, Portuguese mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. So when this movie came out, I grew to love it more with each viewing. And I was like, I don't even care. Like, we don't get to see Portuguese girls represented. And yeah. And of course, it's not 100% accurate because let me tell you something, pizza, I brought this pizza recipe from Portugal and I'm like, I don't think so. We ain't known for pizza. <laughs> and, every, and everybody yes. has, uh, okay, it's, of course, they speak nothing but English in the movie, but everybody's referred to by the English pronunciation of their names. Uh -huh. And while that's very true, there'd be somebody in their family who would have called them by the Portuguese pronunciation of their names, mm -hmm. which could be, which can be very different. Like, because yeah. for instance... My nickname is Terry. It's not my government name because mm -hmm. uh, nobody can pronounce it. Mm -hmm. I feel you. As someone who butchers many a name, I feel people. They see all those letters and they get <laughs> lost. I feel you. You know, I've got, I, I'm, I'm in that situation. Yeah. But like, so we adapt, we make nicknames, we do this and that. But I loved it because the like the extras were Portuguese and New England, I have a lot of 
family members in New England. It is a very plenty of places that are very Portuguese there, uh, like the music and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's about uh, sisters and friends. Yeah. And there's this great moment where Lily Taylor, who is engaged to Vincent D'Onofrio, the movie starts with their wedding and she faints. She mm -hmm. can't seem to marry him. But yet they're still seeing each other. And he has to put his foot down. It's like, it's over. You either marry me or you're not. So sort of the, the movie ends and and, and uh, starts and ends. The book ended with their, their wedding. But there's this great moment where they're making out in their living room. And he says, I can't. Because he looks over and there's nothing but candles and statues, like religious statues of like Jesus. Oh, yeah. The Virgin Mary. <laughs> that is a thousand percent true, Rachel. Some people, <laughs> I have known people who've had their own prayer rooms, like a whole entire room. Mm -hmm. They've got church benches in there, giant statues. Like I've known this. And growing up, we all had that little, like even I've got a little shelf in one of the room with, with all that religious stuff. I, I, I'm i just like my mother. I, I, I've continued to tradition. But that always made me laugh because we always had those, like that little prayer circle with all the religious statues, the rosaries, the crosses, you know, the candles, because we got to light the candle on so-and-so day, you know? Yeah. And he's like, I can't do this with like God around. And it's just so real at that moment. It's so funny. And Julia Roberts, uh, you know, yeah, is at the height of being Julia Roberts and <laughs> she goes out with a guy. And it was like I one think of her exactly, first big movies. I yeah, think. yeah, totally. And She's going out with a rich guy. And it's so funny because when we're, they're at dinner and these waspy people are like, they sort of had, this is very true, degrading ways that they refer to like the Portuguese people. Like that felt very true yeah, in the way that they referred to them like Portuguese, like Portuguese, uh -huh. Portuguese, uh, pork chops, like yeah. you name it, I've heard it. And they mean that in a degrading way. So all that stuff was very realistic. I think what doesn't work that quite well is the Anna Beth Gish story, which is she plays Julia Roberts' sister, but she has and some kind of quasi the married man. Yeah, the married man. She has yeah. some kind of quasi affair. I don't think that works as well, but there's such a bond between the friends and mm -hmm. the life story and their loves and stuff. Yeah. And I've gone yeah. on and on about it. Oh, totally. This, this it meant a lot to me. Yeah, this one was a strong honorable mention for me, just yeah. because I, I do think the the relationship part is probably the less I, I it's more yeah. like we were making like a friendship list, but I totally see it. And I, yeah. it, I, I think the why. most comedic relationship in the movie is is uh, uh lily taylor's yeah i agree romance and, and what she does to that, that poor fun. man because she can't commit to marrying <laughs> yeah i'll never forget when we first watch this on television and it's starting off with that wedding uh -huh. and my mom's like hold up is that portuguese music i hear in the background and we ran to the tv and we're all glued to it and she's like that's a portuguese actor every time that happens rachel it's so funny like we're growing up like you know we did the same thing when we saw that john travolta movie where where he gets the brain tumor and they were like, that's a Portuguese extra. Like we can spot yeah. them a mile away. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, so this, you know, I, I put it on the list because yeah, oh yeah. It's on a lot of rom com lists, which surprised me. Yeah. But it does mean a lot to me. Yeah, for sure. So. Hey, this is Jen Johans, host of the podcast Watch with Jen, which delivers a steady stream of great movie recommendations, thoughtful career deep dives, and first-rate conversations with film critics, authors, actors, journalists, filmmakers, and more. You can find Watch with Jen wherever you get your podcasts or hear us first at our Patreon at patreon.com slash filmintuition. My number seven is Say Anything. Mm -hmm. I love this movie. Yeah. Uh, Cameron Crowe uh, wrote, directed, and, and uh, I I kind of debated does it count because it it's, right. I think, more about the relationships uh, than it is specifically the romance, but it has some, one of the most iconic romantic totally. scenes. And there's, there's not that many jokes. But then I was talking, it was funny, I was talking uh, on Twitter and one of my followers was like, oh, it's so funny. It's such a hoot. I was like, really? <laughs> because to me, it's more about like the dramatic parts, particularly anything with her, yeah. her father. Right. My father commits a crime and uh, he's he's going to go to jail, you know, and, and she has to kind of deal with that and and sort of acknowledge the the flawed nature of her father and that she can still kind of love him. 
even though he's very, very flawed. And I think that that is really well done and written. These are teenagers that feel like humans. Very much they're so, so yeah. often written uh, these days to just be these, uh, these monsters, you know, that, that these sullen, miserable monsters who don't have any humanity to them. And here's one where they actually feel like human beings. And, uh and of course your iconic standing out of the the house with the <laughs> the beatbox and peter gabriel and, i mean such an iconic scene today yeah i mean you know, and it's been even parodied a lot movie. too yeah yeah people that haven't even seen the movie know know what it is because of that yeah. scene yeah yeah and and uh yeah it's i think it's really good it's very it is. good it's, script yeah. okay so what do you have at six i have baby boom yeah that one's i fun. just love this movie it's Diane Keaton, she's so great in it, and she is a woman of business. She's advertising. Mm. She is there. <laughs> she she doesn't get as much respect as she should be because this is also showing that you could be as good as you are in a movie, but like they really pigeonhole the roles and disrespect women, or they don't think women are that great, even though they do all the jobs. But you know, like how hard it is in the business world as well. But she's in a relationship with Harold uh, Ramis. And she inherits yeah. a baby. Yes. So crazy that she yeah. has a phone call going, yeah, here's this kid. And she goes to the it's airport. It's like her second yeah, cousin She's like, oh, something. I inherited something from my long lost cousin or whatever. And she's going to the airport. She thinks it's something valuable. And she just throws like, I guess she's two years old. I don't know. The, yeah. this, like, baby in her hands. And she's like, <laughs> here you go. And she's like, what am I supposed to do with this kid? You'll figure it out. And I was like, I don't think this works this way. And <laughs> Yeah. You know, they're going to put the baby up for adoption. Harold Ramis is like, this is not in our plan. They are a very boring couple. And I think that's yeah. the joke. Right. Like, you know, uh, with them, they're very, like, work-oriented. And she catches feelings, you know, and she's like, I can make this work. And Harold Ramis is out because he's like, nope, I didn't sign mm -hmm. up for this. Which, fair enough, you know? Yeah. Fair enough. And she's like, okay, fine. You know, it, it is what it is. I'm changing my ways. I think I can make this work. <laughs> she interviews crazy nannies and finally she gets passed over for a promotion at work and she's like I can't do this right now I need a break I can't make it work so she quits and she buys a house in the middle of the country and she thinks it's going to be great she put all her money in it but the house is like it needs some major work and she hits her head and she has the I think it's in like room. Maine isn't it yeah, it's Maine, but yeah, it's, it's like, like Maine. it almost feels like a farmhouse in a sense. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, there are parts where we call it like a sort of a countryish, like you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a really small like, town. Yeah, small town countryish vibes. That's what I meant by that. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, it's because it kind of reminds me of the small towns in the country, sort of like that. Yeah. Yes, but yeah. it is oh, Maine, yeah, yeah. and there's a lot of snow. It looks beautiful. <laughs> she has to get medical help from Sam Shepard, who's a veterinarian. <laughs> And so basically it starts from there where they yeah. they play off very well with each other. And, you know, she wins because yeah. she makes baby food from scratch and sells it. So she comes back, baby. So she can be a powerhouse lady of business and a mom yeah. and a single mom who finds a, a good looking man. So take that. But it's, it's a, great. It's a really you know? cute movie. It'd be a strong honorable mention. It, yeah. It, this movie is like the ultimate 1980s movie. It, oh, totally. I'm totally. sure that there have been dissertations written uh, in gender yeah. studies classes about baby food. <laughs> because I mean, it really tries to kind of explore that idea. Of can a woman have it all? Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, the answer, according to uh, Nancy Myers, uh, is, is yes. yes. They, oh, they and can. if you're a soap opera fan, there's this great moment where she's at the park and these ladies are like, I got to sign in for this school or whatever. And she's like, should I be doing that? And the ladies are looking at her like, she's crazy. Like, of course you need to be signing. Like, <laughs> sure. She can't talk or walk or whatever, but she, you got to be signing her into elite yeah. preschools. And one of those women is the great uh, Jane Elliott. Who's a, uh, is a soap opera legend. Mm -hmm. She's most known for playing Tracy Quartermain on general hospital. But every mm -hmm. time I see her in that brief role, I scream because I love her so yeah. much. And you know, <laughs> Oh, when I was a kid and I first saw this movie and I saw her, I was like, it's Tracy, you know, like it meant everything to me. Yeah. Um, but it's just adorable. Yeah. It's it's very simple in its tale. And I mean that in a good way because it's very straightforward. But I think Diane Keaton is just so good. 
yeah. at being like overwhelmed and you know all the <laughs> all the quirks we love Diane yeah. Keaton for yeah. is top notch here <laughs> yeah definitely um uh, my number six I have romancing the stone at oh six. that is much higher for me oh okay good. yes <laughs> I love this movie Rachel yes. I love it so much it's so good so oh, funny uh michael douglas uh and you have kathleen turner who you know is the the writer who's the mousy writer and uh and he well, my sweater yeah i know yeah. he's never had an adventure in our life we, yeah. you know he, he teaches her i'm all about the jungle <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta go to columbia yeah to save her kidnapped sister who gets kidnapped yeah. by like uh drug lords right yeah 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 <laughs> So. <laughs> she's gonna go to Cartagena <laughs> it's a great movie I mean it's a great movie yeah I often think, often copied uh, never often. quite duplicated I yeah. think the most successful in copying it but standing on their on its own is the recent Sandra Bullock one um yeah it was a lot of though? fun Lost City Lost City that's it that um, one is great and it is on the bones of romancing the stone yeah, definitely definitely has that sure. I mean she's so even a romance think, novelist yeah that's the most mm-hmm. like best I, homage to this movie I also think that Nim's Island is a little bit it's not as much a romance mm-hmm. it is as these as those two but yeah. it's a similar idea the mousy author and totally. and uh and there are, more there of a are family some, film yeah. but it's fun there are some great gags in this movie, like when they have to, they're escaping through the jungles because we got Danny DeVito and everybody after yeah. him. And she just <laughs> comes across Michael Douglas and she's like, I need help. But they're running and they have to like swing on a vine and he pushes her and she manages successfully and she lands on her butt, you know, and he's going through the vine and he just smacks right into the, to the mountain <laughs> all and yeah. there's so like I remember, of course, it's a great gag, but the great gag of him sliding down and his head ends up right between her legs when they go into the mud. Yes. Slide. I mean, that's very memorable. Everybody always remembers that. And, you know, they fall in love and it's great. And I wish that the screenwriter uh, for that movie, she, that she had, she died in a car accident and we were robbed of, of a woman who's who had such great potential, like what she could have written, like all the mm. rom-coms she could have written. Yeah. But sure. and it's I mean the sequel's okay, but stick with this one. Romancing the Stone is is the best. I don't think I've seen the sequel. What's the sequel? the sequel? Oh, I gotta look. <laughs> give me one minute. I'm gonna look it up. I can't remember. Oh, it's the Jewel in the Nile. Oh, um, I that is the sequel that. name. Uh, that they it, they're together and miserable at this point, and they sort of break up. And she's like, "Come here to write this," and gets kidnapped, and he's got to try to save her and then she ends up saving him and somehow Danny DeVito was back in that one. It's not as good. And it, of course this this one takes it, it takes place all in the Middle East instead of the jungle. So mm, I don't like it when they have a breakup. I don't like yeah, that. it's true. They're miserable in the beginning. And I'm like, oh, oh it's fun because they have such chemistry. Yeah. But it, it it's not the same as romancing. So mm-hmm. well what do you have at five? I have cousins. Another oh. movie that I adore. It's Ted Danson and Isabella Rossellini. I now, haven't seen that one. I didn't oh, even have that oh, on my short great. list. This is directed by uh, Joel Schumacher. Oh, okay. Actually directed this. Okay, so in the beginning of the movie, um, Ted Danson is married to Sean Young. And he's attending his uncle's wedding. And he's marrying Isabella Rossellini's mother. And she's married to William Peterson. There are so many people in this movie like you know, <laughs> that you would recognize today. Yeah. And they have a young daughter uh, during the wedding. And they get to talking and they're like, hey, we're cousins now. Wink, wink, get it? Uh, step cousins, you know. But uh, mm-hmm. so, so they get along and they start talking. But their spouses hook up and have an affair. Oh, no. And they know it. And they start talking about it. And they hang out and they're like, we know what they're doing. And they're just talking it over and like, you know, and he's like, what are we going to do? This is my, Ted Danson's like, this is my second um, marriage. Because he also lives with his son. They live in a very weird, very 80s, like apartment. And he rides a motorcycle, and plays the saxophone. But his son is so pervy. It's ridiculous. Uh, lo and behold, his uncle dies. And then uh, Ted Danson's uh father who's played by Lloyd Bridges comes 
So Lloyd Bridges and the mom, Isabella Rosalini's mom, end up having a thing together while they're di dividing because they were they're in the oh, garbage wow. business, right? Yeah, it's weird this how they connect. It's messy. <laughs> but Isabella Rosalini and and Ted dance and like they're so great in this movie, and they start to hang out, and their spouses don't like it. Are they on to us? Why are they hanging on? Like Isabella mm -hmm. Rosalini's husband is very jealous of it, and so they're like, forget about them. Let's make them jealous. So they just start hanging out because they're real good friends. They start doing things and they laugh and they they are just loving that their spouses are suffering because they know that they're together and they stop seeing each other. And then it gradually, they start having an affair to dance in this boat, Rosalie. They really become friends to lovers in this. Mm -hmm. And of course it has the conflict where, you know, Ted Danson and like and Sean Young agree to separate you know, and Sean Young leaves, like, it was a, a very amicably, like, it just didn't work out. It's funny, because she's she, she works at the beauty, uh, you know, counter mm -hmm. at a store, and Isabella Rosalini decides to stick it out with her awful car salesman of a husband, because they have a young child, but she's miserable. Mm -hmm. And then they come together, and then, you know, they're like, I love you, whatever, make it work. And then, boom, her mother and Lloyd Bridges get married in the end. So they end up becoming step-siblings towards the end. <laughs> and it's so oh, weird. Wow. Yeah, it's like, it's like two people who would have never known each other, would have never come across each other, if not for the family connection of, mm -hmm. of his uncle and her mother getting married. So it's all of this is by chance. Even the hookup between their spouses is by chance. And it just leads to them... Being like, because they both like Isabella Rossellini like wants to be happy, but she's being conformed like because they're immigrants and this is like mm -hmm. I'm being conformed to like marriage and stuff and oh yeah I forgot her grandmother's in that too going your mom's a waste <laughs> of a human too like it's so funny and like be happy it's like hysterical yeah. and well, and finally they become free like they discover their passions they're like we're not going to be pigeonholed into this anymore we're we're going to mm -hmm. go on. It's great. It's a great yeah. movie. It, it's very funny. Huh, cool. Very I have to check it out. Yeah. It's at the my, tail end of the 80s, 80s um, but it's great. Yeah. My number five is some kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think this is very underappreciated, underrated. And the John Hughes, this is John Hughes written uh, movies. You don't really hear uh, this one get talked about that much, I don't think. And I think it's better than a lot of the ones that get talked about a lot and what i right. like is i think the writing is really good in this one yeah especially something like leah thompson's character who would just be a mean girl you know just a jerk but she has right. something to her character like she's a human and right uh they are, she has she cares about people and uh, I just think there's more to that relationship between eric stoltz and leah thompson even though she's yes. obviously not the one right. and then you have mary stewart masterson who is obviously the permanently you know, stuck in the to, friend zone yeah. friends to lovers you know kind yeah. of thing and it's done so well and the the where he she teaches him how to kiss that scene is <laughs> so good yeah <laughs> and uh, you're like what is wrong with this <sighs> this boy um but he has a lot to his character too i mean because he uh, he wants to be an artist and doesn't want to go to school but his dad you know, has dreamed of having a child to go to college. And right. and, uh, and so there, there's like some good writing, I think, there. And you've got Candace Cameron Bure uh, in this. <laughs> oh, very young. Yeah, very young. Baby. Dance. Yeah. yeah, as a teen. I, I just think it's underrated. It has good characters, well-written, uh, and, um, and it's very romantic and fun. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies 
or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Do you have at four? I have When Harry Met Sally. And we've talked mm-hmm. about this movie a yeah. bunch. And it's just great. You know? Yeah. I have it at three. When Harry mm-hmm. Met Sally, three. Uh, really great script. Great chemistry. Yep. Uh, see how their relationship builds. Uh, Bruno Kirby and Carrie Fisher are so good. Uh, so so good. many iconic scenes. Great cast, yeah. So many iconic scenes. Like, I, I will never want that wagon wheel tape. One of my also, this parts. is another thing with like the boom box. Uh, even if you've never saw this movie, you know Meg Ryan in the diner yeah, scene. In the know? diner. Yeah. Yeah. Cats, so like these are diner. scenes like if you just had that, you even if you hadn't watched the movies, yeah. you would know what it's from. And and I'll have what she's having. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was great. It's such uh, a great we line episode- delivery, too. Yeah, we have all, and that's Rob Reiner's mother. Yeah. Uh, and we have a whole episode of breaking down this movie. Uh, it was one of our New Year's episodes with me and Greg. So if people want to check that yeah. out. Uh, but yeah, it's it's, it's great. Great. It's really the great. The only thing I hold it in is I think that they should have had the guts. To, exactly. I love the ending because it's so iconic with him. Right. You know, when you figure out you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody you wanted to start as soon as possible. But I think for the overall question of the movie, it would have been more authentic for them to have been friends because that was the big question: can right. men and women be friends? And and uh, but uh, but it's still three. It's it's a great it's a great movie. Yeah. Um, and number four for me is where I have broadcast news. I mm-hmm. think this is one of the best scripts uh, that ever. I know, one of the best scripts ever. It's great, James O. Brooks, yeah. uh, and it's about this um, this news station. Holly Hunter, Albert Brooks is in love with her, and the new hot uh, newscaster comes in, William Hurt. And he is totally he's, hot, by the way. He's totally hot. <laughs> um, and she kind of falls for him, and he has to kind of watch this. And uh, <sighs> it's, it's great. Yeah, I, I do love this too, but like, I do like how she doesn't end up with anybody at the end. Yeah. You know, she's like, I got my work. I tried all this out, you know, but you know, I'm me and I yeah. like that ending. Yeah. I like it. Spoilers. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but it's a really old movie. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, and when Albert Brooks's character just. Oh confesses yeah. His love. You know, And it's just so like, hard. you yeah. feel so bad for him. It's such an authentic moment. It is. And but then- I do. I do love how they're like, Nope. She ain't going to end up with any of these guys. Yeah, I, do too. I, I do feel that that film is brave. Mm-hmm. For the time to end that way, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you have at three? The Princess Bride. Yes, because I debated this if this one was a rom com or not because I always view it more as a fantasy adventure. Yes, so I, didn't I can know understand that. If I should, it, it is on lists. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. magazines have listed it as the best rom com, <laughs> so I didn't know. I debated it, but yeah. I do love it so much. It's so iconic. I think I am looking for the. Mag- you know, Six fingered man, you yeah. know, and you know, it's oh, he's nearly dead, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it's so quotable. But yeah. I, I think that the problem sometimes is with people that people are expecting like Monty Python. They're expecting like a laugh riot. And that's right. not really how it is. It's more yeah. like, oh, that was clever. That was funny. <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. Um, it's more about the characters and the adventure and the and the romance and the there are things. And it's just sort of more like witty, I would say, rather than totally. Being like, yeah. And I, I love well, I think that. some people, that's why they're like, oh, that wasn't that funny. Yeah. And, and like, it's not it's not that kind of funny. Yeah. I don't know. And I do love the premise because from uh, for a long time people were saying this book uh, was unfilmable, and yeah. um, it's been a long time since I read the book. I and think it, that it's a better movie than the book. I, this is a, I, to me, it is a better. Um, it's better than the actual book, but mm-hmm. I do love how it's Peter Falk reading it to his grandson. Yeah, when he's sick, and I just because in the that. book it's not the grandpa in the book. No, it's him. It's the author. He's yeah, making all this commentary, and it's so annoying. It, it just uh, it that takes you out when, yeah, when it you're does. reading the story because you want to go back to the story. But yeah, I do love that. And like when Fred said, "Wait, wait a minute! I thought you said there was no kissing," or like, yeah. he died," <laughs> you know. And then like the people just pop in this movie and make wonderful mm-hmm. cameos, like Billy Crystal and Carol Kane. Like, oh, yeah. he's nearly dead we can save him and- <laughs> <Liar>! <laughs> <laughs> yeah 
yeah and wa- uh, and wallace sean like i'm so smart and stuff like that you know it's <laughs> like these people like it's so good and it's so yeah. much fun and I kind of miss movies looking this way Mm -hmm. because in the eighties we had so many fantasy movies and stuff and they looked a certain way. I don't know if if I'm, if I'm explaining myself right, but it's like now everything is either filled to CGI with the max or uh, to the max, or it's so sophisticated looking. And I kind of miss the simpleness of sort of these fantasy movies looking the way they do, you know, Mm -hmm. and it feels real because they're outside for real. They're really rolling down them hills for the stunt doubles, mm-hmm. anyway. Rolling down mm-hmm. them hills, you know, as, as you wish. You I mean, wish. Yeah. it's so great. It's so yeah. Great. I have it at number two, so I'm right with you. I completely yeah. agree. And uh, I, it's, it's. I think in a lot of ways, it's kind of a perfect film. Totally. I think the closest that we've gotten to it since then, as far as a family-friendly adventure comedy, I think is the first Pirates movie. I think has some of that same energy uh, mm-hmm. and with the stuff yeah. and the, the humor and the right. Yeah. And, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty close, but that's, I think about as close as we've gotten. And this movie is incredible. I mean, it's popular everywhere, but it is incredibly oh, yeah. popular in Utah. It is like, we kind of would joke that it's a, it's a, uh, it's one of the like standard works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you've this got movie, your Bible. I've also owned it's almost. Right. Yeah. This movie I've owned, like I've had the VHS, I had the regular yeah. DVD, then I had the Blu-ray, then I ran out and bought the Criterion Blu-ray. Yes. You know, I like, because I have so many versions of this movie, it's great. And I always live in fear that somebody's going to, like, get a light bulb moment and think they can remake this. I yeah. live in fear of that day. I think it's kind of shocking that they haven't done it. The only thing that I say that I think should be done with The Princess Bride is I think it would be perfect for a Broadway musical. And I'm not totally. the only person Absolutely. that's thought of yes. this idea. Yeah. There's been two it's attempts. Amazing. There's been two attempts written, two treatments. Uh, I don't think any of them have ever been put on, but um, it's one of those projects that's always sort of talked about. And But I yeah, just feel it like would, it has I all think it of work. the spots. Perfect totally. for They songs. could have an entire song about rodents of unusual size. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you can, and you can have a whole song about as you wish, you know, totally. and about, yeah, I think yeah. it would work. And 100%. like Prince Humperdinck, perfect for a villain song. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. Um, so that's the only way I ever want to see it remade. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can see it. Yeah. I can't believe it hasn't been done though. I know me too. Cause I, I was going to do a video for theater Tuesdays about uh, movies that, cause practically every musical on Broadway these days is based on a movie of some kind. Right. And I was going to do an, a video on uh, movies that should be made into musicals. And I swear right. everything has been attempted. There are treatments for everything. You like, remember the I, I started just looking up stuff like no way. And there's a diehard musical that exists. Yes. I, I've heard <laughs> about that. The Rocky musical. I was like, excuse yeah, me. Rocky. I don't know how successful that one was, but like, I was like, what's going on here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, for a long time, I would say the quiet man would make it, but there's, that's, I found out there's, there's one, there's a treatment. It's so oh, it's yeah? funny. Um, yeah. You have a whole song. Like every the idea has been thought of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, mm. but yeah, so I have that at two. What do you have at two? I have Moonstruck. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we did have this is a, the same list. <laughs> yeah, this is such a great movie. Cher is at her best here. <laughs> Nicolas Cage is at his best Nicolas Cage in this movie. And like Cher is just, she's just a regular woman working as an accountant. You know, she's widowed. She lives with her parents and yeah. she gets engaged to Danny Aiello. And he's like, I got to go home. You know, my mother's dying. It's so funny because yeah. she's thinking they're going to get engaged or whatever. And they're engaged. And he goes, my mother's dying because he's engaged. And then his mother makes a miraculous <laughs> recovery. Yes. And, like, she's got to go <laughs> make mend bridges with his brother, who's a butcher. And he, Nicolas Cage is so Nicolas Cage. In this, and he's got a fake hair. And <laughs> he eats his brother because he got his hand jumped off. Yes. Which is stupid as the reasons. And they hate each other. <laughs> And then they just can't, they just You're have a, a night of passion. And it changes share completely, you know. She's reawakened, yeah. you know. 
Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. I have it at number one. Yeah. I absolutely love it. And I think Olympia Dukakis is so good in it too. So good. They so Him deserved their Oscar wins. Her and John Mulaney. Oh, so good. Oh, yeah. Like I. Yeah. When like she, I wish I was like invite him in. Like she should have. Yeah. Like, your husband is, said, is is a jerk. <laughs> yeah. When she looks at her husband and says that, uh, um, that uh, you ain't got nothing, you know, and and right. that uh, that whole scene at the end is yeah, so. She goes, "I love you, and good. this is enough." And he's like, yeah. "Okay." And that's the end of it. And that's yeah. how they resolve that. Like you can see, it's a marriage of love and many years together. Mm -hmm. And she knows what he's doing, and and that's how they resolve it. And that felt very yeah. realistic into so that good. part. It's yeah, so funny and, because but they're eating that oatmeal. Never did oatmeal look better. Oh, <laughs> never. It's so funny because I don't believe Cher's Italian, but yet I will buy it in this movie. Like yeah, you know, she just blends in so well to that. It's, it's great. I I I think this is a perfect film. I wouldn't change oh, anything 100%. about it. I absolutely love it. The chemistry. 100%. The the script is so brilliant. I love the whole scene when they go to the opera and she's, oh yeah, she it's so great. And like, and Cher kind of, yeah, like Cher's makeover where she like dyes her hair, you know, because yeah. she's kind of in a. It's not like she it's, sort of reawakens. Like I, I'm not yeah, dead yet. I'm still got yeah. some life. I'm living in a slump. And she's so great. That mm -hmm. scene is great. She looks fantastic in that moment. And it's yeah. like, oh, when she's walking down the street and her hair is blowing everywhere. Yeah. It's such a great New York <laughs> movie too. Yeah. I want you in my bed. <laughs> right now. So good. And it's like my hand. And the, the, the girl who works at the, the butcher shop, who I think is also in love with Nicolas Cage. She's such a tortured oh, soul. Yeah. It yeah. is like, I would, you know, oh, that whole entire yeah. end. We're like, we're not getting married anymore. I'm marrying your brother. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Johnny, give me the ring. <laughs> oh, it's and so he's good. Like, um, okay. <laughs> and they're all people who are like, oh, she shouldn't have gotten the Oscar or whatever. I'm like, oh, come on. She, she should have. That. It was she so good. That. She's so good. So, yeah. Movie. I'm with you there. I, I did forget. I did because I don't really think of um, you know, because Little Mermaid is one of my favorite movies of all time, but I don't really think of it as a rom com. No. I guess that's why I didn't have it on the list. But if I if, if people were gonna count it, it would be like a one A. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I love that movie. But um, but yeah, so that's I have it at number one. So what do you have at number one? I have Romancing the Stone. Yeah. It's a movie a that pick. I've loved since a child. I try to rewatch it every year. It's been a while. I think uh -huh. I'm going to put it on today since we're talking about it. I just love it so much. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. Um, they just don't make these yeah. type of romance adventures anymore. That's why if you have a chance to go see The Lost City, do it because yeah. that's a lot of fun. Agreed. They successfully managed that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go over our list real quick. So I have Moonstruck at one, Princess Bride at two, When Harry Met Sally at three, Broadcast News at four, some Kind of Wonderful at five, Romancing the Stone at six, Say Anything at seven, Bull Durham at eight, Murphy's Romance at nine, Overboard at 10, Splash at 11, and Look Who's Talking at 12. That's a lot of good movies in that list. That is. That's a lot of good movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, so what's your list? And my number one is Romancing the Stone. I have Moonstruck at two, The Princess, Bi the Princess Bride at three, when Harry Met Sally at four, Cousins at five, Baby Boom at six, number seven is Mystic Pizza, uh, Hello Again at eight, Roxanne at nine, Coming to America at 10, Luke Who's Talking at 11, and my number 12 is Overboard. Very good. Yeah, we have a lot of matches. Yeah, we have a lot in common. <laughs> and I only have one thing to say, searching lists, uh, magazines and that have done it all these sort of places where you can find lists of the rom-coms to the person who put endless love on the rom-com list i hope you get some help because i don't know how that movie is a rom-com <laughs> tortured love affair that these two teens have but okay yeah well it's like and then some people with love story you know what, what is in, going on with from you the 70s <laughs> what is are you hurt you know have you kind of I, I still can't get over it endless love I, I saw that in two lists and i was like excuse me yeah, yeah. I was it's like, true. is this the same movie with with Brooke Shields we're talking about here? <laughs> Just because I have love doesn't mean it's a rom com, folks. Oh, there's talking in that movie. I don't think so. Then again, I, I do have nothing else in my but, life. Yeah. It'll be to defend the definition of romantic comedy. 
It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy what people yes. think is a rom com. But anyway. <laughs> Well, very true. Let us know if you're listening, what you think. I'll put my short list uh, in the description so people can check that out. And if you want to do your own videos or your own posts uh, with your own ranking, we'd love to hear that. Just uh, just tag us and we, we'd love to see. So put that uh, in the comments and uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter and all of our social media. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. And Terry, where can people find you? I'm at Flurry Heaven on Twitter. Great, great. And uh, please leave your uh, ratings and reviews on iTunes. That really helps us a lot. And uh, if you're listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. And uh, check out the patron group. Uh, it's a chance to be part of a lot of times these rankings. And then also we have our watch alongs and other activities. It's really fun. You get your money's worth. And then we also have our merch store where you can get all kinds of fun design, including we have a princess bride uh, inspired design that you could check out. So uh, take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.